This episode is sponsored in part by Kitchler Lighting. Hey guys, I'm Terry. And I'm Brian. Welcome back to the Forest Farm Project. We're at Terry's old house again. Yep. Today we're going to be adding some ceiling lights, eliminating this fluorescent light, and adding a ceiling fan box. Yep. And a sink light. All right, let's get to it. So what we've got planned is we've got these uh, remodel cans, they're recessed remodel cans. They've got these brackets that you flip out from the inside, you cut a hole, you lay this template on the ceiling. It's actually a, a sticky uh, paper and you peel the back off and you stick this to the ceiling where you want the light and you can cut that circle out. This is kind of warped. <laughs> and then you slide this can up through the hole and you lock these little brackets into the sheetrock and it locks down on the sheetrock and holds it really good. Uh, the reason we're installing these recessed cans is um, it allows a lot of versatility. We've put thousands of recessed cans over the years, ever since Brian's been working with me whenever he grew up. And then beyond that, for another 15 years or so, mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of recessed cans. Some our, of them houses had 200 or more recess in yeah, one house. Some of the bigger houses, our yeah. average houses have had anywhere from 40 to 80 recess. So Easily, it, yeah. And spend days putting recessed lights in. Right, and it's people who are going to keep up with the times. Well, the old recessed bulbs, they're a thing of the past. They used to have yeah. great big ones, and they mm -hmm. went to a smaller, sleeker-looking bulb and mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, but we're not actually going to have recessed bulbs or trim in these, in these lights, and Brian's going to show you that. Because of the overwhelming number of recess across the country, companies are coming up with great alternatives that can be used ceiling-mounted on a regular box or in a recessed light. We've got these LED downlights from Kishler Lighting. They're super thin. They can mount flush to the ceiling and just on a regular box like this fluorescent is mounted to. Just your standard light box. It doesn't yeah. need a recess. But they know that Kitchler's smart. They know that mm -hmm. there are lots of There's recess out of there. Recess. And people no, are going to have those recess. Yeah. Those houses, some of these country clubs and whatnot, those houses are going to be here long after we're gone. And they're going to adapt mm -hmm. to the new technology. Right now, everybody's going to LED because it's so much more efficient. Yeah. So, Kishler has a handy-dandy little retrofit kit that gives you the spring clips you need to clip it into the recessed trim. It gives you a socket adapter. And then you wire nut these together. And you've got an no. LED downlight that mounts right on the ceiling. It barely sticks down about an inch. It has a nice, sleek design. And it's LED. And so, they throw some light. Oh, it's it's not like your standard recess. These things... No. They throw light out to the sides. Most older recess, they came down at a pretty sharp angle. Even if they were three or four feet from the cabinet, the top shelves wouldn't yeah. be lit. With that, it lights all around. It's Extremely really, wide angle throw. You're going to yeah. love these lights. They just the, the quality is amazing. Yeah, yeah. They, we've installed a lot of them in houses, and everybody that we've done them for just loves them. I think Kitchler made a smart move in doing that, and we're following suit, trying to be smart. This is, makes it adaptable to whatever new is coming. They're yeah. going to make whatever comes out. Whatever technology comes out, however much better it gets, it's going to work in a recessed light. Yeah. There's millions and millions of these things out there. Yeah, so yeah. definitely a good way to go. All right. Definitely. Let's get to it. Yep. All right, we came in this kitchen and we said, where do we want our recessed lights? Where do we want the ceiling fan? We centered this uh, oven and the countertops around it in this area right here. Dead center being right there. So we measured over. I marked it out here because it's lights in the way, but this is where we're going to center the fan, only over here in the center of the room. You don't want to install any lights too close to the fan because you'll get a strobe effect as it's going by the, the light, you know, the, the blades going by the light will cause flicker and you don't like, you know, that would be annoying. Uh, so you got to keep them out a little ways from the fan. And we decided I think four are going to do it in here because those lights throw a really good light around and we're going to have under cabinet lights over top of all the countertops here as well so there's gonna be plenty of light in here uh, since we set it on this we're putting a fan right here we wanted to go equal distance out from this fan to the recess in either direction that's not necessarily gonna be center of the room but that end of the room is gonna be a refrigerator washer dryer cabinets are deep there this end of the room there's no cabinets so there's no restriction in where we put these things to make them look balanced so we decided since the fans here and it's centered on this cabinet we came over here and this is our window over the sink. 
So we decided to put these lights in line with that window. And we measured over to our fan, and then we measured over that way again to make sure that they, uh, they would fit over there and not be too close to the cabinets. Everything's working out perfect. There's no set rule. You could have 10 recess in here or two, uh, or any kind of ceiling lights you wanted. Just do what you want. I mean, there's no rule. It's just what makes you happy, especially when you start doing these perimeter lights rather than one light in the center of the room. Uh, there's bunches of ways to do it. Just figure out a good pattern. You can look at the specs on these lights and you can see how far out the light spreads usable light at X number of feet down. Usually on an eight foot ceiling, they give you how far it'll be spread at say four foot. And then on a 10 foot ceiling, it's you know gonna be spread more from that height. So this is an eight foot ceiling. We have a good feel for what to do because we've put so many of them in, but you just have to kind of work with that. That's something that I can't really teach you. You just have to figure it out for yourself. So now I'm not going to show you, you know, the exact measurements we made and how we determined that. It's find the center of the room, find the center of an appliance, find the center of where you want your fan if you're doing a fan, balance the lights on it to where they look good for you. All right, so we want to make sure that we're between the joists here. So I'm going to take this thing and slide it around on the ceiling. And oh, there it is. I feel a nail there. That magnet's grabbing it, a little magnet on there. And we need to check over here. Find it. Oh, right there. So there's our joist. We need to get this can up in that ceiling. So this is how big it's gonna be. If we center on that mark, we should be plenty clear of these joists. It's gonna work there. We'll be centered the sink, it's gonna look great. So first off, before we do that, I'm gonna double check all these measurements and I'll show you what I'm gonna do here on one, but I'm just gonna double check all my measurements. So we're gonna take this insulation wire and drill it through, stick it up into the attic and this should get above the insulation up there or else we'll be able to at least feel around and find it so that we can make sure there's not a rat run above this or some other obstruction from getting this light in here. I'd hate to cut the hole out and then find out something's in the way. So we're gonna try and determine as much as possible that nothing's in the way. It can happen and you mess up. We haven't had any problems like that, but there's always a first time. <laughs> okay, let's measure this is 36 and that's where I had measured it out to be, or Brian and I had measured it out. 36 there, I think we were 40 something here. I believe 43 was our number and right there it is. We wanna make sure these two line up with each other on this end. Mark that at 43. And hopefully we're at 36. Thirty-six. All right. One thing to determine how far out from the wall you want to be. Uh, we have a top cabinet here. It's twelve inches out from the wall. So another two foot out is is plenty good. This is a smaller room. I've went out from the wall as much as four foot instead of three foot on a bigger room. But this is a little smaller room, so you're squeezing things in. There's three foot off the wall on each side. Only going to be two foot off the top cabinet, and then there will be four feet between them, which is a good number. I try not to get much closer than that. All right, we're gonna run a wire up in the attic and then we're gonna show you how we clear out an area for one of these lights and then we'll just do the rest, but we'll just show you how we get one prepared to mount. Go into dust mode. Not gonna be dusty right here really, but we'll do it anyway. That's where I want the light to be. Now, if I happen to have a problem and that's hitting something and it's in the way, it's not going to be a big deal. I got a little tiny hole to patch. If I cut a whole great big hole, then I got a mess. Okay guys, there's our first wire. We poked up right there. So we want to get some of this insulation out of the way so that when we cut that hole down below, it don't all fall in our faces and all over the room. So I'm going to pull it this way and then we'll push it back after we get the light up there. It's a big mess. This hose helping out. I don't have to climb out there because that's obviously you can see that's a low, very tight area. Okay, so right here where I've got my hose set in that piece of wood, that is exactly why we shoot that wire up between them joists. 
two reasons. One, so there's something like that's right where we want the light. We know we've got to move that light or not have a light if it just don't work out. In addition, this lets us know we're between the joists. There's one here. You can see me hitting one there. And there's one over there. Plenty of room for the can. All right, we cleaned out around all these lights except one. Uh, this one, that one, and that one over there was plenty of access. The one right here over the kitchen sink, we've got ductwork coming over here. We've got wires, boards, it's just a mess. So we're gonna just go ahead and clean up the mess from that one when we cut it out. Insulation's gonna fall. Three of them are cleaned up, it's better than what it was. Uh, we got smart this time, it's the first time I've ever done that. These insulation wires we ran up there, instead of doing one, climbing up there, cleaning out around it, and then moving that wire, moving that wire, we got four of them and put them all up there for four lights. We're done. I don't know why I never thought of that before. A whole lot less trips. All right, the wire from this light has got to come out and it's going to feed the four perimeter lights, the kitchen lights we showed you earlier. And then we'll add a different wire for the fan. All right, we got that fluorescent out of the way and we are going to remove this box. It's not located where we want. We're putting a fan box over that way. And let's get this thing out of the way. This switch leg that was the light, fluorescent light is going to be our perimeter lights, the kitchen lights we showed you. And then we'll add a new fan box. This is not a fan rated box, so it wouldn't do any good if we did want the fan here. And that's that. We can leave that bar up there. It's not going to be in the way. And we'll just, just do us a little patch here. You could buy, there's some little round blank covers. If you don't mind an old box being in the ceiling and it has two tabs that hook on here and then it pushes up in there and all you see is this round cover. They don't look bad, you can paint them. We're just gonna patch over it. We're never gonna do anything here. It's gonna be over there where the new kitchen setup is. All right, we're gonna take one of these fancy pants little stickers here so we can cut out the proper size hole for this recessed can. I just peeled one side of this back off and I left the other side and there's a hole in the center. So you can take that hole and line it up with that crosshair up there and then stick that side down now it's on the ceiling. Now if I can get a hold of this paper, we'll peel it off of this side. And we'll come back the other way. And that's where I need to cut this hole out. All right, guys, these brackets here, they slide over, catch the sheetrock. We'll show you how that goes up in a minute. Inside is a adjustable apparatus that you can adjust it for different size bulbs. There's different bulbs that go in here, different depths for different types of, types of trim. In this application, when installing our Kitchler lights that we're gonna to install to this, we don't need that bracket. And so we're gonna to have to take it out. Most modern, uh, trim does not require that. Most modern trim hooks directly to this socket. It clips in these two little brackets here and here. We're going to figure out what's the pattern that we want to put these lights in. Well, the most practical thing is that one over there is the last one. That's where the switch link's going. This is going to be the hardest one to get to. So we're going to hook this light up here with the wire already on it and have enough to go to that other hole. And then we'll push the wire through the hole after the light's made up and put the light in the ceiling and this wire will be over there to make life much easier. If we hooked that one up first and pushed the wire over here, we'd have to try and get that wire in this little space. It'd be a little more complicated, harder to do. So, I'm gonna see how long we need this. From there, I am under both of them lights. And I'm wasting a bit of wire here, I'm sure, but I wanna make sure I have enough. If I throw a foot of wire away, it's not the end of the world. If I have to redo it, it's worse. So here's our wiring box. Pull this cover off. You got a hot, a neutral, and a ground. The ground's green, neutral's white, black's hot. We gotta take a straight blade screwdriver. You can either knock one of these out and put a two screw connector in it, or we can do what we normally do, pop one of these loose. Like so, take your wire you wanna hook to it, shoot it through here. and make your connection. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. These wires are a little crooked on the end. I'm going to clean them up. You want to strip enough to go in these connectors. I do about a quarter inch-ish, maybe a little more. If it don't work, you can twist it around and pull it back out of there and do it again. White goes to white. Push it in, make sure it's sunk up to the insulation. The ground's obviously bare, but you still want to make sure you got it all the way in there. You can see it pop up in the top there. And the black wire goes over here with the other black wire. You can tell it's in there. They will not pull out. Always check that factory wire as well. Sometimes those factory wires will pull out on you. So you want to be definitely sure to check those. You don't want it going up there and not having those wires in. Okay. Fold these down in the box nice and neatly. There we go. Put that in. Okay, let's try and get this light in this hole. And get this wire over to that hole, hopefully. <laughs> We'll probably knock a little insulation down in the process. We'll see here in a minute. It just kind of goes with the territory. There it is. Back to the right a little bit. There you go. Who's the man? You've done this a time or two. It helps. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can get up in that hole. He does have one added complication of the fact that we have dual layers of sheetrock because of the old ceiling heat. So that is going to definitely complicate things. It's a little bit of a challenge, but it's not too bad. And the sheetrock kind of crumbled when he was cutting because of the okay. brittleness from the heat. It's in okay. the hole. Let's see if we can get this clipped in. It ain't going to go because it's so thick. There we go. I'm gonna push it out a little bit and then clip it in. Push those things out and then push the clip up and in there. And they tend to grab the ceiling, hopefully. You gotta push that in so it slides out on the sheetrock and you push up on that little tab and lock it up there like it. All right, well, we got light number one in. Now we're gonna. Uh, Jump these others right quick and we'll catch you on the other end. All right, I know it was a little bit difficult to see how these tabs lock in on these recessed cans when you stick them up in the ceiling, so let's show you how that works. This, this thing flips out like that, and this hits the sheetrock, kind of like that. But you got to kind of push on it, and then it, when it's all the way around, it's hard, hard to show you like this, but when you push it, you have to push it in, and you see there's a, a slot right there, and you have to get it pushed over here, and this is being sprung against the sheetrock. Then you take your screwdriver and push that down like that and it locks it in place and it holds it in. All right, well, as you guys can see, the recess are in. They look great. 
We've just got the sockets hanging loose right now for temporary lighting. We don't want to put the Kishler flush mount LED down lights in until we're done because we don't want to risk messing them up. So we just threw some basic LED bulbs in there to give us light. Looks really nice, good, even lighting. We're really looking forward to what this is gonna do for the kitchen. It's gonna be so much better than that fluorescent was. Well, that's about it for this episode. Check back soon. We'll be tearing out the floor next and it's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. Have a good one, guys.